Hello and welcome to another episode of Soul Nectar Show, that show where we talk about all things essence, where we gather around the campfire and we share our stories of connection to that which is bigger than us, to the big mystery, the great divine, to, you know, that Wizard of Oz behind the curtain and how this whole life experience functions and, and just uh, sharing our stories also helps, you know, us to feel better sometimes when we're in the middle of the, of the human mess. It can just feel great to hear somebody else's story about how they woke up and how they felt something profound that really helped them get by one more day at a time. So I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird. I love having these conversations. Of course, this pathway has saved my life and helped me really learn how to cope with my life. And using these tools and practices and things I teach in Butterfly Circle, you're welcome to check it out on my website. Uh, it's carriehummingbird.com, K-E-R-R-I, hummingbird.com. And uh, there's lots of offerings up there and things you can check out. And I welcome you to it. I welcome you to join community. We need community to get through this life experience on earth. It is not easy. So I want to welcome to the show another friend of mine, Allie Page. Welcome, Allie. Thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to be here. Really glad you're here. So we're going to hear beautiful things from Allie today. We might even get a little taste of her medicine. I'm really excited about this. She's an integrative coach, a holistic healer, and a breathwork guide. She guides her clients to create space for the life they were meant to live by helping them rework limiting beliefs, clear and transform emotional pain, and heal childhood wounds so that they can step into their power and reclaim their purpose. And boy, at this time, Allie, I can say to you that your gifts are so needed on the planet at this time. We have got so much going on. And so what I want to do first, though, is I know the listeners are really curious about you and your story because we love to hear the stories on this show. So tell us a little bit about your story and how you got started doing what you're doing. Sure. So it, it really all started. I struggled a lot with anxiety as a young child. I was a very sensitive, empathic child who kind of um, like internalized a lot of everything. <laughs> And I also, you know, struggled with anxiety from some of my earliest memories, just feeling like a really anxious child. And I kind of carried that up to the peak, like around 15, 16, where I just, you know, secret panic attacks, like just really, and particularly in social situations, I had a lot of uh, social anxiety. And around this time, I really um, was a seeker and I was just kind of searching for answers. I was searching for ways to feel better. And um, I was raised Christian, but I knew like I was just interested in kind of exploring other paths. So that led me to exploring different Eastern religions and things of that nature. And then for the life of me, I don't remember how this really happened, but somehow like this mini, this teeny mini book um, of meditation kind of found its way to my lap. I can't remember if I bought it or someone gave it to me or something like that, but it was like this teeny little book about meditation that had all these different meditations. And so I just kind of started meditating. And that's kind of where my story really began because I started to really just learn how to manage my thoughts, my emotions, and kind of started to learn that I wasn't my thoughts. I wasn't my feelings. I felt a lot as a kid and um, just kind of learning that discernment of kind of, okay, well, this is the anxious mind and this is like the self underneath the um, anxious mind. So kind of just learning the difference between the two, which allowed me to really kind of create space for a different way of being. I just knew that that life wasn't for me anymore. And um, I kind of had reached that peak of like, there's got to be more than this kind of a thing. Um, and so I just kept meditating and I brought that with me, you know, up into my 20s, going on my first meditation retreat and all those things, um, which later led me to become a meditation teacher. And then from there, I was in my mid-20s and experiencing a lot of emotional pain in my relationship. And that led me to find breathwork. And again, I don't really remember how I found it, but I found breathwork and then kind of out of a whim. And for people who don't know what breathwork is, it's really just an active meditation that facilitates a lot of emotional healing and transforming and kind of really just uh, stepping into who you really are. 
And so I found that and just kind of on a whim, I signed up for this one-to-one -one program with a breathwork facilitator. It was like a really deep dive and I just kind of did it like kind of in the spur of the moment and it completely changed everything for me. And it, it, I mean, I heal things with that facilitator that like I hadn't healed, like I thought I could never heal. And so it really allowed me to work through the emotional pain to kind of reclaim the lost parts of me and the way that she described it to me was that kind of, you know, we have these parts of ourselves that we have pushed away, um, you know, as children, we accept ourselves, but as we learn, you know, well, if I do this, I don't get love, or if I do this, I do get love, then we kind of start pushing away those parts of us. So through breathwork, I was able to, it's kind of like shadow work. So I was able to really make peace with everything. And I was able to find the self-compassion that I needed to really heal and, you know, just really learning in order to heal, I have to feel everything. And so I did that and I really just heal things I, I didn't think were possible and found the self-love that I didn't know existed and really just learned that, you know, in order to truly love ourselves, we have to love all the parts of us, not just the parts of us that society says is acceptable or that traditionally we've been, you know, given the reinforcement or the pat on the back, but we have to accept everything. And that's really how we find radical self-love. And so it was really through kind of like facing the, the darker parts of me that I was able to access that self-love. And so that's kind of what led me to the work that I now do. And I really just specialize in emotional healing and helping people work through the the difficult moments and the emotional pain and you know um, giving people permission to be imperfect and to work through that because on the other side you really find your true nature which kind of has just been clouded by you know the pain that you've been through the grief that you've experienced or whatever the case may be and it just kind of clouds you and prevents you from realizing who you actually are so that's kind of in a nutshell how i got to where i am today Gosh, I really, I love that on so many levels. I love that you found a magic little meditation book. I mean, that's yeah. just, that is kind of how it works, right? Like just something falls in your lap and you say, oh, this is exactly what I need right now. Yeah. <laughs> My next part of my journey. Thank you. you know, it's sort of magical. I love that that happened. And I, and I really echo your um, feelings about breath because the breath is so powerful. Um, you know, just even if you think about what's going on in the world today um, with so much going on with COVID and people having trouble breathing, you know, this, this, mm -hmm. this causes people to not be able to breathe. And yeah. George Floyd, all of a sudden he dies, right? He gets killed by this police officer and he can't breathe. He's saying, I can't breathe. I can't yeah. breathe. I mean, breath is like, is an answer I think right now for us at this time. Yes, Metaphorically. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's crazy to see, like, I, I've heard that from other people. It's crazy the correlation between the breath, like you were saying, and all these different things and kind of like how the breath connects us all. And it's a lot of times this overlooked thing that we all do, like we all breathe all the time, but we kind of overlook how powerful it really is to help us heal and to help us connect with our power and who we really are. So. Well, if we, we think we're breathing, but we're shallow breathing, you know, yeah. and we also hold our breath a lot. Mm -hmm. Like I realized um, at some point that I was holding my breath. It was when my husband, when my new husband came in uh, about four years ago, he's, he was so attentive to me that he's like, darling, you stop breathing. And I was like, what? Oh, I didn't realize I, was, I had gotten in this habit of I just always would hold my breath, yeah. hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And I would forget to breathe. And then I would breathe really shallow kind of in my chest. And I've, I've been trained to sing, as a singer. So I know when you sing, you've got to open up your diaphragm. So you've got to get breath all the way down through your whole body. And then sing comes from like your belly button. It doesn't come from up here or here. It comes from the belly button. So I know how to breathe, but I just, you know, we get in these habits, I think, as um, trying to take up less space or something. Is that part of your experience of it? Forgetting yeah, to breathe? And, yeah. And it's interesting, too, because I've definitely seen, you know, a crazy rise in anxiety for a lot of people. I mean, especially right now, but just kind of like in the past, however many years. And what's interesting is that when you do do that, and a lot of us subconsciously do hold our breath and we're breathing really shallow, that actually physiologically impacts your body. So you're not 
really even taking in the right amount of oxygen and that kind of thing. And so, of course, you're going to feel anxious because you are, you know, you know, kind of breathing really panting. Shallow. Yeah, panting. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, yeah, no, I definitely see that um, with people that I work with. And it's, you know, like I said, just like it's such an overlooked thing to just check in with your breathing, but it really starts there in so many ways and can really help, you know, not only with all of that, but with, you know, releasing stress, anxiety, and all of that. And it doesn't have to take long either, you know, like we can take a few breaths here and there and really just feel better. And we can also incorporate it into everything that we already are doing. So I think sometimes people think, oh, I have to set aside you know, hours of meditation every day, but really you can incorporate it into everything. Like even if you are sending an email or, um, you know, whatever you're doing, you can check in with your breath while you do that. So that's fun too. Yeah. You check in with your breath. I like that. So it's an awareness component as well. Mm -hmm. I, I, one thing that really taught me a lot about the importance of breath was when I went to um, Peru, I went to at high altitude to uh, on a camping trip, you know, a spiritual journey to uh, Ausangate, their holy mountain, which is up high. And we were camping at 14,500 feet. And wow. so in order to ensure your safety, because that's very high up, um, mm -hmm. so not everybody can, can be at that altitude. Um, their bodies just can't tolerate it or they're not breathing enough or there's something, you know, there's, they're just not suited for it and they have to go down the mountain. And so in order to be sure nobody has a problem, cause you could die, you know, if you're not careful, they it actually had to monitor your, your blood oxygen levels um, with this little thing they stick on your finger. Right. And to, mm -hmm. and, and then it will tell you if you have the right percentage and if not, you've got to like start breathing more, like really deep breathing, wow. like, you know, so I recommend people go get one of those things, you know, stick on your finger and just check and see, you know, are you getting enough oxygen, you know? Yeah, no, that would be so helpful. Yeah, but no, I had never thought of that. That's a cool experience, though. And it was amazing because there were a couple moments where they stuck it on my finger and I was I was too low, like I was at 88 or 89 or something. And, and it's much better to have like 98, you know, something like that. And I, so I would just like, <laughs> like really breathe, like, expand it in and then, you know, like drain it all out. That's the other thing is like the draining all out of your lungs, right? Talk about that a little bit. Cause I didn't really understand that piece. Like that you have to drain out your lungs, like really hold it out in order to talk about like the exhale process. Yeah. So there's a lot of health benefits with that. And so in the research that's been done shows that the breathing, when you're using breathing techniques, there's a lot of health benefits for when you are inhaling less than you're exhaling. So by prolonging the exhale, you're like letting out more CO2. And so there's like that kind of health benefit. And so um, there's some, you know, different breathing techniques that you can do that just even physiologically, like it just makes you feel better because you are supporting your body in that way. Like just in terms of oxygen and CO2, getting the CO2 out, bringing the oxygen in. And so there's a really famous one that was developed by medical researchers, which of course it's been used before that, but I think they were the ones who kind of popularized it. And it's called the four, seven, eight breath. And so you just inhale for four counts, you hold your breath for seven counts, and then you exhale for eight counts. And so by exhaling for that longer period of time, it's really just kind of supporting your body's health. Do you so, want to you want to lead us in one of those? Let's let's do try it. Let's sure. try it, everybody. Get ready. So, Ali, lead us in that. Okay. So you're gonna go ahead and you just want to put both feet flat on the floor and just kind of check in with your body. And you can do this anytime, anywhere. If you're in a meeting, if you are, you know, working at home or whatever it is that you do, and you just want to make sure you're sitting straight. And then you just inhale for four counts. We're gonna inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then release. And then on that release, you can also put your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Mm. And that really like helps with um, releasing stress as well. So we can do it one more time. Yeah, let's do that with the tongue. Okay. So go ahead and inhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five six, seven, and release. Ooh. Yeah, I just got a jiggle. 
<laughs> That's my and, little body sign yeah. for shaking it off. <laughs> and it's best done four times. And so when you're doing yeah. this, you can just repeat it four times. It's so fast, so easy. And you'll notice you just kind of, you're more connected to yourself. You, you know, feel better and it's just so easy and simple. So I love that one. Yeah. I wonder, I'm also wondering at this point, because my, when I first, when I had a lot of stress in my life, like so much, it was when it got overwhelming in my life, right before I made my leap into this part of my life about nine years ago, it was so stressful for four or five years. So painful that I actually turned to running, Mm -hmm. you know, like I had to run long distance. I ran marathons. Like I ran half marathons wow. and marathons. I probably like 13 marathons and a couple of, oh my half, gosh. no, two marathons and, a, and 13 half marathons. Let's just correct that. <laughs> no, wow. I didn't do that many marathons, but it's like the thing about marathon running is that, is that you have to breathe. Like yeah. you really need to breathe. And it's also like, it pounds it out of you. Like all this stuff you're holding on to, every jogging step sort of like especially in the pavement, it's like it shakes your body. It like pounds at all the stuff you're holding in your hips and everything out of your body. It's just kind of interesting. Um, I'm wondering about the impact, maybe the reason why that works is because of the aerobic activity, because of the pounding, but also like the aerobics of it, like exercising your lungs. Because don't we hold a lot in our lungs? Yeah. And we hold on to so much in our body. And so I think that could be part of it too, um, because I've definitely experienced that of, you know, after going through a lot of emotional pain, like feeling like the need to run and it's because we're, we're holding so much in our bodies a lot of the time. And that's where our emotions that we haven't processed live. And so things like running, anything where you're getting physical and expressing yourself through your body can help you like get that energy out in a way. So that can be helpful too, to, you know, for healing. But yeah, I mean, we hold on to so much that we are not even aware of. And most of us are just carrying, you know, so much pain that we don't even know is there. And so practices like that can be really helpful. And the breath's one way, but like you said, running's another way to just kind of help release that stagnant energy out of your body. Yeah, so, so important. Yeah, it gets it all shook up and moving yeah, around because exactly. yeah. it gets, you know, sometimes, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but sometimes I've noticed when I get depressed about something or sad about something, I want to like curl up in a ball and just sort of like hide or put the covers over my head and just sort of sit in there and wallow in it. Like, you know, like I know, cause it's really hard. wallow, you know, Yeah. but it's like, um, that depression it can be so, um, it can block activity. Like it can really make it hard to even do things you really enjoy. Mm-hmm. Like I haven't painted in years. I, I'm an artist, but I haven't painted in years because when I left my former relationship, like there was so much pain and I had been painting and everything that it's like I had to shut that part off. And I found an outlet through all these other things that I'm doing, right? But like that thing has been blocked because of all the pain, right? Right, And so um, I, I'm really working with myself. I'm exploring this in myself right now, which is why I'm bringing it up because I, I hope this helps people and serves people out there. Um, maybe you're going through something else to detect the signs because you were talking about like awareness, how important awareness is to go, oh, wait a second. I don't, I feel blocked with doing something I love. I feel blocked. With t- Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. And the, and that's so, I've experienced that too, where you're just not aware of the block in a sense, but from my experience, it's because a lot of times we are like, our society is really a society, like an intellectual society. Like we're always in the head, right? If you think about it in terms of to the rise of technology, how we're always on our phones, we're always reading, you know, an article or whatever. And so we're always like up here up in our heads. Um, and so that's really we're not connected to where we can heal. And so if, if we're always up in our heads, we're not going to be aware of what's happening below the head. So what's happening in the heart and our emotions that live in the belly, you know, so we're not aware of any of those things. And so to become more aware, we can really just incorporate practices that make us more grounded and, you know, bring us back to the body. So whether that's exercise, I, I'm a big fan of mindfulness and just kind of checking in with your five senses throughout the day. So if you are someone listening to this who, you know, maybe uh, awareness is a challenge, little things like that, you know, even 
walking um, bare feet on the earth, things like that. Breathwork is a fabulous grounding practice as well. And so by incorporating those things, we can actually start to um, reconnect with what's going on. So how am I feeling? You know, what, um, how am I blocked? And by just reconnecting to below the chin, (laughs) we we really kind of get there that way. I think it's actually mindlessness. I've always really confused when they call it mindfulness because the mind is already so full of so much thinking that to me, it's actually like mindlessness, like, like just less mind, more body, right? Like maybe it's body full, you know, maybe that we just need a new word because when you said that word, I started, my question started going off. What does that mean? Like, I'm not sure I know what mindfulness means because I've, I've, I thought it's too much in here. Tell me about what you think. No, that's such a good point. And yeah, you're right. Like the, the word is so misleading. I had never thought of that before, but you're right because the word really means just being aware, like in the present moment. And so like being aware with your body, you know, your five senses, you know, just kind of that heightened awareness. Um, and I think one of my favorite definitions is, you know, being aware on purpose in the present moment, but you're right. Like it can be confusing to, you know, am I talking about my mind? Am I talking about the body? But yeah. And so mindfulness includes everything. So it could include being aware of your thoughts. Um, but we do definitely need to be more in the body. And so focusing on that will help us kind of connect to those blocks, connect with how we actually feel, because a lot of times we don't even know how we actually feel because we're so disconnected. And then before we know it, the layers of anger have added on, you know, the layer of sadness is on top of that, then another layer of anger is on top of that. And before we know it, we're feeling really depressed. And we don't know why and it's really because those things have added up and we didn't deal with it because yes because we, we weren't in our body well because also you know in my experience i would say my stomach's really upset right now by the way so i know i'm about to talk about something i don't want to talk about um but i'm going to talk about it anyway because i do that <laughs> like yeah. okay that's uncomfortable is it's definitely i notice a pattern in myself and and it's called the pleaser Mm -hmm. A lot of women have this pleaser pattern Mm -hmm. where it's like we get this idea that if we just keep tolerating or being, you know, processing it on the inside and being as peaceful as we can or just not create a conflict about it and just try to just get by with it and just hope that the person will, you know, like get through their challenge. And that's love. That's like the definition of love. What do you think about that, Allie, like now that you've done your journey? (laughs) That has been a big part of my journey. So I (laughs) totally relate to that. I always say like, I'm a recovering people pleaser. So (laughs) Um, no, but I mean, I grew up a really quiet child, you know, and I was raised in a household where, you know, if you don't have something nice to say, you keep your mouth shut kind of a thing. And so I had a huge problem later in relationships Um, like speaking up for myself and speaking my truth because I thought, you know, it was selfish or I thought that, you know, it would lead to less love from the other person or, um, you know, all these different types of things. And so I would really end up, you know, sacrificing myself for someone else. So I can totally relate to that. And maybe others listening can relate to this as well. And, you know, it's still, you know, a challenge. I have to check myself sometimes and just If I notice that pattern, I just force myself to say it anyways, because when you sacrifice your truth for someone else, what you're really saying is that that person's more important than me. So it's really kind of an act of hatred to yourself, which is heartbreaking. Like that's, you know, not- Especially when you're doing it because you love somebody. Right. And, you know, the other thing I noticed is that it's kind of also like not wanting to say it for multiple reasons, not wanting to speak up could be because you, you love the other person and you don't want to hurt them. Right. <sighs> yeah. It's hard. But then, you know, I got to say, cause I've been on the other end of that. So I have somebody in my life who, who has done that, who won't speak up. And mm-hmm. I, I felt into it cause I'm a feeler. I felt into it and I like, I think he's not speaking up because he doesn't want to hurt me, but that hurts more actually. Like it hurts when people won't speak up and you know it that they're not, because when you get in your body, talk about that a little bit. When you actually get in your body, Ali, 
don't you have so much more awareness about yourself and others when you're in your body and you're really processing your stuff and aware? Yeah, absolutely. So you yeah. know when someone's not telling you something. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it helps you become more aware too of that there's something you need to say too. Because I know that was my experience before I had as much awareness of my body. It was harder for me to speak up because I didn't really feel that there was something there to say, but you'll notice emotions in your body when you don't speak up and you might notice like anger or something like that. So you're like, I need to get this out. But if you're not aware of that, it's going to be harder to speak up. But, um, what yeah. are some ways, what are some signs that you've noticed? I mean, I notice a tight throat, yeah. stomach gets upset. What are some of the things that you notice as signs that there's something that needs attention? Yeah, same thing. I, I experience the same thing in my stomach. Like, I'll just feel like, I don't know if for me it's like an upset stomach, but it almost feels like like all this pressure in my stomach. Um, yeah, sometimes I'll feel something in my throat and I'll notice just different emotions in my body too. If I have held something back, you know, there may be sadness in my body at, you know, the fact that I'm really kind of abandoning myself by not saying what I need to say. And then there may be anger at the other person because I haven't said what I need to say. Maybe someone um, crossed a boundary and I didn't communicate that. And that's the thing about emotions too, is a lot of us are afraid of them. We don't want to feel because as adults, we haven't really been taught like how to effectively deal with emotions because we're just not supposed to feel it. But a lot of times anger is telling you something important. Like it's saying, hey, that person crossed a boundary and you just need to talk to them about it. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's more like, okay, well, let me check in with myself and maybe let's just have a conversation with this person about how that made me feel. But it doesn't have to be something we're so afraid of. And sometimes, just... sometimes the anger also can be anger with yourself for mm -hmm. not taking action on something you know you need to take action on. Absolutely. And then you can, you can direct that anger at other people mm -hmm. without knowing that you're actually angry at yourself. Absolutely. That's a tricky one I've gone through as well and I've spotted, you know, in people close to me. That it's a pattern. And, and so how do you start to decipher that? I guess is like, what are some tools that you give people? Is it the breath? You bring them back to the breath and then listening. Is that how they start to decipher? Like, why was I angry? Like, was I really angry at this person because they crossed a boundary with me? Or was I angry because I've actually been crossing boundaries and I know I need to do something and I'm not doing it? Or like, why am I having that anger? How, how, how do you help people? Because that's a messy thing. Like this internal thing is so hard to navigate, isn't it? Yeah, you're so much about that. Yeah, it can be really hard. And I think it just goes back to really just, and my dog's going to bark. <laughs> That's okay. Welcome, doggy. Uh, every time I podcast. <laughs> um, but I think it goes back to just deepening that relationship with yourself. And the more you go into the, you know, whatever practice you choose, whether it is breath work or something else by really just deepening your relationship with your internal self, you kind of, you get to know that about yourself more and more, the, the longer you embark on that kind of journey in a sense. And so to me, that's how we decipher is it's through, you know, regular breathwork practice or meditation or whatever you do. And really just kind of um, being able to decipher, is this mine or is this someone else's? And keeping that awareness in everyday life to maybe just check yourself if you notice yourself projecting on others. But it is a really tricky thing. It can be challenging. Yeah, and I think the most important thing is to voice it anyway, right? Because otherwise, um, it's still stuck in there. Yeah. And that yeah. is painful. I, I suppressed a lot of things for a lot of years, Allie. Uh, and I even took those medicines, you know, the make you stop feeling medicines for your right. you know, psychology. Mm -hmm. And what I found was that I didn't ever stop feeling. I just was numb to it. Right. So then I did more behaviors that were even more painful, but I couldn't feel it. Right. Cause I'm numb. Right. And I see a lot of people taking those med medicines and I, I just want to say like, if you're one of those people, there's no judgment, but just realize that you're still feeling things, even if you're not feeling them, they're still happening. You're just not tuned into it. And it takes years and years to clear that out, in my experience, mm -hmm. to excavate that stuff, to excavate mm -hmm. it out, because there's just layers of it. 
Right. And that's what yeah. it really leads to depression. Like, we yeah, were it's like the more you don't deal with something, the more it adds on and adds on. It's like, a, it's kind of like an onion. And then before you know it, you're just so depressed and you don't know what to do. And mm -hmm. my breathwork teacher taught me, you know, a few years ago, she told me that depression is really like a protection mechanism that your body has. And it's really not like a bad thing. And it's no, nothing that you need to be ashamed of or anything like that. But it's really just your body is like, whoa, like all this stuff here, we need to like shut it down. And so your body really just kind of shuts down as self-protection to protect you and that's why you want to sleep all the time is because like your body's really trying to take care of you and just let you get rest because of all this stuff and so it's actually something we can be grateful for like if we do experience depression it's really just a red flag that's you know telling us to you know go back to our inner selves and maybe work through some things but it's really just the body taking care of you and that's really kind of a beautiful and there, there's no shame you know in sleeping in like if you like I have had periods of my life mm -hmm. where I my body is telling me sleep 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 a lot can happen in sleep it's kind of amazing mm -hmm. a lot can get processed in your sleep if you can't Absolutely. face it when you're awake a lot can get processed mm -hmm. if you set the intention that you want to heal it right so like i'll open sacred space like i did over this call and i'll just go in and i'll say okay i'm going to take a nap now and, and i know i need some healing and i just like i welcome all my guides and support and my body and my consciousness to help me to clear this up because it's hurting and you know and i just let that process unfold for me and maybe my mind will have some dreams i'll have some crazy dreams or something that will illuminate some aspect of some voice right that wants to come out yeah. but we don't we don't have to hammer everything i like that you're using breath work because it seems like a really gentle graceful way of healing without yeah. re-injuring yourself yeah and i love what you were saying about sleeping because I think so often we feel like we have to always be doing, 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 but there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with giving yourself what you need. And if sleep's what you need, like, that's totally okay. And, you know, just really being gentle with yourself and, you know, sending yourself that self-compassion to know, like, it's safe to be imperfect and it's okay to sleep. You know, it's okay to not wake up at six in the morning and meditate and, you know, really just being gentle with yourself. Um, but we have a tendency to feel like, oh, I have to be productive. I have to do this. I have to check this off to do this. And that gets exhausting over time, you know? So yeah, it's so important. Yeah, it's so important. Wow, there's so much, so much healing and, and, and uh, to do. But if we actually face it, what happens is that you, in my experience, you get stronger. Like you just have more resilience things things have happened for for me this week without talking about what they are actually are but things have happened for me this week that had they happened to me 10 years ago that would have been it for me like it would have just taken me out right. it was painful and i was able to stay present with it no i'm not on medications or anything like that anymore i don't i don't take not feeling pills i just feel it i feel it to heal it and exactly. it is overwhelming and i and i and even for me it was overwhelming and i was like Oh, I can feel that old urge to get out of this body. Oh no. And so I went for a run, right? I went for a run and, and I breathed and I, I got held and I yelled. I also screamed, you know, like breath is one of those things. Like you actually need to maybe just like scream that out. Yeah. Maybe we can talk about that for people. Yeah. Talk about screaming. Um, yeah. Because what you'll notice, um, for people who have never done breath work, um, you know, it's an active meditation technique. And then you're just repeating the same breathing pattern over and over and over again with a facilitator who a lot of times curates specific music for you to help you kind of go deeper and go into your body. Um, but a lot of people do find that things come up like anger, or sadness and things like that. And we don't just like, you know, try to push it down, but we actually just try to get it out. And so if you notice that in daily life, screaming is great. Like my teacher taught me, you know, scream into a pillow, scream into your hand, like just get it out. You can shake your body. You can... Uh, punch the air, you know, do all of those kinds of things. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's really just, okay, I'm just like letting the energy out. That's all. If you need to cry, you cry. And then you come back to the breath when you can, or you come back to daily life when you can. And I'm, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying, you know, go out and scream at your neighbor or anything like that. But, you know, creating spaces where you can do that kind of work is so healing. And 
a lot of people end up, you know, leaving sessions just feeling so much lighter because we don't realize everything that we have been holding on to and we don't need it anymore. It's energy. Yeah. It's actually energy. Exactly. And when you burn it off the energy, you actually have a clear channel again. I, I had this guy, because I learned this work too, this really important part is like releasing the energy. And anger is one that most of us, most humans have some negative connotation with anger. Like it's very hard for us to be with the anger energy yeah. because it's been misused and it's been directed and it's been used for hurtful things. Mm -hmm. But it's actually just fire. It's a really powerful fire. And I remember um, I've released it sometimes where it's like, all the way down from my belly button, like a roar, like my teacher taught us how to roar like a lion. You might try this one, it's really good actually. But you roar and it just like all the way down from your belly button, like you're just roaring like across the whole African plains, like a, like a lion. And you just let all that anger just like out, like, you know, it just yeah, like, I love that. And, and it's like, you can actually feel it coming up like this, like, fire hose of toxic crap that you like yeah. that you were holding onto in your body because you didn't want to be angry or you didn't want to you know because you didn't want to break taboos and be bad well no nobody wants to like yell at somebody else no I don't want to do that I don't want to be the proponent of that but I need to get that energy out you know so somewhere somehow you've got to make space like in your car is great you know because you're driving and then you can just you know yeah. and if people think you're weird that's okay yeah, that's totally okay. I think especially as women, a lot, you know, a lot of women grow up, you know, being scolded or whatever, like if they ever got angry. And so that's, it starts young and people just start, um, you know, suppressing how they feel. And I'm sure men too. I feel like for men, a lot of men get shamed for being sad, you know? And so it's kind of like- if And learn, angry too, actually. Yeah. yeah. And if we learn from a young age that like, we're not going to receive love if we get angry, then no wonder we suppress it when we, you know, get older. But it so. can actually, like, it can put you in a cage. Absolutely. And it can, it can suppress your light when you don't mm -hmm. release it. Right. Absolutely. So powerful. Yeah. You got to, you got to let it out. You get gotta, it out. Let it out. <laughs> in a healthy way. Not at somebody, you know, not at somebody, but just right. like, like I released some the other day um, with my husband, but he was holding me and he knew that that's what it was. And so he was aware of like, I just need to I scream. And so he just held me while I screamed. And I just like, I moaned and I screamed and I just let it all out. Everything that would wanted to come out at that time. And he just held me through it. And then I cried because underneath the anger is the grief. Right. Exactly. That's what a lot of times you will find. Um, when you go into this worth is underneath anger. A lot of times there is sadness and it's like covering it up. Yeah. But that's so beautiful that he was able to hold space for you like that. Yeah. He just held me and I just screamed. Oh, that's <laughs> and then I later, I apologized to my neighbors. I'm like, I hope you didn't hear it. If you heard me screaming, I'm okay. Um, <laughs> I just needed to release some energy. I needed yeah. to get oh, it's So powerful. I wish more people would um, embrace this. Um, but we have to be conscious first because that's a conscious use of the energy. And, and up until now, many of us have experienced an unconscious release of that energy. And that's why we get scared because it leads mm -hmm. to violence and other things when it's unconsciously expressed. But when it's consciously expressed in a safe place, you're really stepping more into the truth of who you are, which is beneath all of that. And your, you know, your inner light exists underneath all of the stuff you've been through, underneath the anxious mind and like all of that. And so by going through it, you're really connecting with the truth of who you are, which is underneath all of that. And so it's so important. So important. Well, beautiful. So, well, everybody, um, thank you so much, Ali, for sharing your wisdom with us and for coming thank on the so show. Do you have a, um, a way that people get started deepening with you? Sure. Yeah. So I do have a uh, free breathwork resource library for people who want to try it out. And uh, we can probably post a link, but um, all you do is you just click on the link and enter your information and it'll be sent to you. It'll uh, send you a password. And there are two different breathwork audios on there and a few different PDFs to help you deepen your practice. And that was, would probably be the best place to start to try it out for yourself. And then you can also find my information on my website as well. 
Beautiful. So I'll be providing those links in the show notes so you'll be able to click and go and get that uh, those free resources from Allie and try it out. And uh, I just want to say to everybody, if you really enjoyed what Ali um, provided here today and the information in this uh, interview, please share it out with other people. Please uh, give us a good review on iTunes and on YouTube or wherever you find it and give us a five star or, you know, if you felt that way. And, uh, and just share it out so more people can find this, these kinds of resources and tools for, for healing because, you know, we're all in this together and boy, it's, it's a tough experience on earth. You know, um, if you, if you have an idea that just cause I'm leading this podcast, like things are hunky dory and all like perfect every single day, I want to reassure you that no, actually like shit's hard. Okay. <laughs> like there's hard stuff. Sure and, right the tools make it easier. The tools make it easier. The practice, the daily breathwork practice and things like that, daily spiritual practice makes it easier. But there's still stuff that happens and, and we're all in this together. And, you know, as you grow, you get bigger challenges. So you're always on the edge of your seat, you know? So, <laughs> this is, we're all ever learning. growing, ever evolving. <laughs> Yeah. So as we, as we master that piece and we get the next level, that's even, that feels like just as challenging as the last level and it's even more. So, you know, so we, we're all growing together and we're all learning. So just, you know, we're, we're doing this together. So thank you, Allie, for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's been, I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to give people kisses on the way out. I always want to join me in giving people kisses. Here they come, sure, people. Here we, go. we love you. We love you. We love you. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next time on Soul Nectar. Bye for now.